Thanks, Rosie. So, okay. Um, hello, I'm Jack Chang. Um, what's all the stuff on the tables for? We'll find out soon enough. Uh, first, uh, I just wanted to tell you all a little bit more about myself um, in case you're not familiar with my work, um, or even if you are familiar with my work. Um, so, let's see, some of you might know, uh, as Rosie mentioned, my last children's novel, See You in the Cosmos. Uh, my new book, The Many Masks of Andy Joe, is, uh, came out a month ago, and it's for readers ages 10 and up. Uh, and this book is actually more of a personal story. Um, it's uh, much more inspired by events from my own life, and it takes place here in Southeast Michigan. Um, and uh, yeah, I grew up in Metro Detroit, and the book starts with the main character, Andy, with his grandparents, um, oh, coming to visit him from, um, from China and staying with him and his family for six months. Um, and while all this is happening, Andy is in the middle of a lot of change. He's starting middle school, his friendships are changing, his best friend Cindy convinces him to bleach their hair together and it goes horribly wrong for Andy. Uh, his new science partner, Jamil, starts giving him trouble but then they actually become friends through their shared love of haichus and anime. Um, and it's in the middle of all this change that Andy really starts to discover himself um, as an artist. So uh, this is a book that has lizards and it has potlucks and home-cooked Chinese food. It has trips to cider mills and fishing in metro parks. Um, and I really wanted to uh, show a kind of Midwestern Asian American experience that I haven't seen in many books. Um, a lot of the ones that I've encountered for kids or adults um, typically you know, are uh, Asian characters living in coastal cities or they're living in small towns where they're the only Asian person there. And so I, I felt like there was something really unique about the Midwestern experience. Um, be, and especially because it, you know, it's one that I, I personally lived. Um, another thing that this book has is lion dancing, um, specifically lion dancing masks, which will tie into our activity today. Um, before I jump into that, I wanted to read a very quick excerpt from my book, um, and uh, that is related. So to kind of set this up, um, Andy's family, uh, along with his grandparents, his Habu and his Atya, um, his paternal grandmother and grandfather, um, they're visiting a Chinese community center where Andy used to go for Saturday Chinese school. All right. Inside, Habu helps Atya take off all his winter layers, and my parents spot some people they know and go say hi. I notice a faint drumming in the distance, different than the basketball dribbles coming from the gym. This beat is faster and less random. I think I hear cymbals, too. While no one's looking, I slip away. I follow the sound. Down one hallway, there are pictures on the walls with little plaques like at a museum. I see news articles about Detroit's original Chinatown and black and white photos of parades and protests and a girl wearing a big button that says, I am an American Chinese. Another photo shows a memorial for someone named Vincent Chin. It's not stuff we ever learned in school, my regular school. And it's not stuff that Mama and Baba ever told me. On the next wall is a row of maps of Michigan and other Midwest states, showing the Chinese population of each county over time. The 1920 map says there were eight Chinese people living in ours, just eight. Then in 1970, there were 763. And by 2000, there were 10,874. I wonder what the number will be in the next map. Whatever it is, three of those people will be Mama, Baba, and me. The drumming's louder, the beat faster. I'm getting close. I follow the sound to a room near the gym. There, my eyes immediately go to the pair of giant, colorful animal heads bopping around. They have big, round eyes and shocks of yellow fur and red nose pom-poms and, fl and flaming green skin. They're lions for a Chinese lion dance. And shortly after that, um, Andy actually gets to uh, try on the mask. He hands me the lion mask. I grab it by the collar and twirl the cape behind me. I lower the mask down over my head, careful not to drop it. 
It's both lighter and heavier than I expect, something about the way it balances. Inside, the frame's made of strips of wood instead of wire, and there are uh, there's a pair of plastic handles behind the mouth opening. The ceiling lights filter through a kaleidoscope of colors. I shake the head a little and the mouth flaps up and down. I almost want to start dancing right then and there. I'm a lion, roar! Um, so, yeah, so that's an excerpt from my book. Um, thank you. And uh, now it is activity time. Um, so for today, we're gonna be using the crafting supplies at our tables to make our own character masks. Uh, and then we'll, uh, afterwards, we'll talk a little bit about um, how these characters might re relate to the writing process and to the characters of a book. So uh, if you're, it's your first time making a mask, don't worry, because it's something people have been doing for centuries, for millennia. Um, you can find a little bit of inspiration from, you can find a lot of inspiration from all places. There are masks in Native American and Asian and African, Latin American cultures pretty much everywhere around the world. And they can rep represent animals and spirits and gods and even ideas. Uh, and new masks are being created every day. Um, so I actually have a couple of examples here of similar masks. Um, that you know maybe will provide a little inspiration. Um, you've got plates in front of you. If you're really ambitious and good with construction paper, you can sort of make something a little more 3D. You can do your own thing. So uh, we're going to spend about 20 minutes um, making these masks, uh, and then I'm going to be just roaming around, chatting with you all at your tables, and uh, answering any questions, helping out. So. We'll do that, and then after 20 minutes, we'll share out, and then I'll talk a little bit about writing. Those who are done or close to done, do y'all want to share what, what you made? Anyone? <laughs> um, how, about, how about instead of sharing the mask itself, uh, let me ask you this, like, uh, in what ways is the character shown by the mask you made different from yourself? <laughs> Go ahead, Rosie. All right, anyone else want to share? Thank you for sharing, Rosie. Yeah. And what um, when when you're when you're you have that mask on, how how is that like the kitty mama version of you different than the everyday you? I try very hard not to do baby talk, but okay. too much review. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if it's a lot different because I'm I like to think this might sound bad at first. I like to think that I'm a Yeah. Like having a human child. Yeah. Picks up their pants, tells you what they need. So, um, and I would say it's kind of a lot. I think we all struggle with that. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? <laughs> okay. Mm. Thanks for sharing. I'm actually um, inspired by the Studio Ghibli character called uh, Princess Mononoke. Yeah. Um, yeah. She was um, raised by me. Okay. And I love her. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wow. Um, okay. Thanks. All right. Yeah, go ahead. I do like a combo mimic of like Bo and Ruben, so I think it's like three of the best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. So, so it's it's sort of like it it it's like wearing its character on the sleeve, almost like where it's just like presenting the fullness of, yeah, yeah. of who they are. Okay. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So, um, I guess like you know, I I asked this question because um, I find that when I'm writing, um, I get to like. You know, it, it's almost like wearing a mask. Um, I get to like try on these characters and have them behave in ways that I normally wouldn't behave um, in in my in like my everyday life. Um, so, for instance, like in my last book, in *See You in the Cosmos*, um, the main character Alex was like um, he's vi he takes language very literally like he can he does engages in a lot of like wordplay and will find you know will question weird sayings that he comes across that, that and is like you know why is it that way or he'll he'll have a very literal interpretation of things and like i'm not as much like that in my own life and so it was you know i felt like when i was writing that character and writing especially from his perspective um i was slipping into like a it, it was like wearing a mask where i was like embodying that character in a way. Um, so, you know, so that's something that if y'all are writers and like, you know, if you feel so inspired after uh, today's exercise, maybe like you go back and that could be a prompt for a, uh, a writing exercise. You could write a story about or from the perspective of um, the character that you just made. And I, I think the other thing that like, I love about the idea of masks and the idea of like being able to try on a different identities is that especially I think when we're younger, I guess like at any age, right? There's there there can be like a tendency that like you feel like you know maybe you don't have one particular identity or one thing that you feel like you strongly identify with, um, and that's okay, you know, and that's like that's like realizing that there is sort of this like core you that's underneath the mask that has this like kind of like integrity and has this like you know thing about you that is like the, the, your like you-ness if you want if you will but that 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 in different circumstances will will you know put on and wear different masks um because sometimes because like we need to in order to like survive a situation other times it's because we want to like try on a different, you know, character for a while. Um, so yeah, so I guess like those are a couple of 
you know, my own um, personal kind of like takeaways from this assignment. Um, and we do have a little bit of time. Um, I'm gonna be signing books uh, right outside the door, but also um, if y'all have any questions, we've got like a few minutes for questions before we do the signing. Any questions about me, about my writing, about writing in general, books, yeah. Yes? When you write, do you set aside a certain amount of time every day? Do you, does it come to you? How do you get your ideas? Yeah, I, I don't think I'm totally consistent. Um, so I started writing fiction like full time, seriously, um, after I did like a, after I started doing a journaling exercise where I was just trying to like write in my journal uh, a few pages in, in my journal every day. Um, it, it's called Morning Pages. It's this exercise from this book called The Artist's Way. Um, and the goal is just to, like fill those pages with you know, whatever's on your mind, like not checking yourself. You know, like a lot of times I would even just be sitting there typing like my stream of consciousness, like I can't come up with anything to write. I would just like type that. Um, but after a while, I think like I got in the habit of putting words on the page and then like stories started coming out. Um, and that's how I ended up like working on my, like starting my very first book. Um, so even today I go back to journaling as kind of a warm up exercise um, and a good way to like just maintain the habit even when I'm not like actively working on, you know, a story. Um, otherwise like I think ideas for stories and ideas, like ideas for stories as a whole, but also ideas for when I'm working on stories that apply to that story in particular. Um, a lot of those just come to me, you know, as I'm like doing the dishes or like a lot of times, especially uh, I, I mentioned to some of y'all that I spent some time in New York and moved back to Michigan uh, in 2014. Like moving back, I'm driving a lot more. And so a lot of times in the car, you know, I'll, I'll start daydreaming and I'll start thinking about my stories. And then I think there's an aspect to being a writer that is about like being aware of when you're doing that and recognizing that that's sort of like your subconscious telling you something about the story that you're working on. Um, so yeah, so I, I think it, I try to have a routine. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but you know, I'll usually like end up thinking about a lot of story ideas anyway. Yeah. Uh, yes. What has inspired you to write for children specifically? Yeah, well, so when I started working on uh, Sea in the Cosmos, I had an 11 year old main character and I wasn't necessarily thinking about like kids who were gonna read it as more like you know, I wanted to be true to what that character was experiencing as an 11 year old. Um, and um, I actually had met a literary agent a little while before that when I was working on my first book, which was like an adult book that I self published. Um, it was when I sent a draft of it to her that she was like, we need to be shopping this around with like editors who handle young adult and middle grade fiction. And I was like, I don't, understand what, what the difference is because there are plenty of adult books that have kid main characters. Um, and I think like after, you know, after some time, um, you know, writing for kids and, and like visiting schools and stuff, um, I think the distinction that I make is that a lot of uh, adult books with kid main characters, they usually approach it from this perspective of like, the thing happened in the past and now they're wiser and they have, they're reflecting on it, right? It's like, um, yeah, it's like, yeah, they, they, they're, they're, you know, they're reflecting on that experience. So, so the narrator, or, you know, the voice in the book actually knows more than what that character knows. Whereas I think when you're writing for, directly for kids and teens, um, it's more just like, you know, getting across, like not trying to sound like you're smarter and wiser. It's more like getting across that visceral experience of like what it's like in the moment to be that kid. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's how I got into writing for kids. And then once I started doing um, school visits and you know, talking to students 
especially that I was like, oh, this is great. This is like something that I don't get to do, you know, really with like, like writing for adults. I don't get to go into schools and like meet kids. And, and I think I, I also like being able to connect with kids, you know, like who, yeah, have a lot of life ahead of them and are growing and changing. And I, I guess like a little more, a little less rigid than a lot of adults are. Um, you had a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. I, I think when when I'm writing, like when when I'm writing, it's it's I describe it as like it's like I'm experiencing a dream. Um, so I usually don't have an outline when I write. Um, the first draft is very very rough, and I'm more writing to find out what the story is. And so as I'm writing, like you know, scenes and actions and characters, they'll just like kind of appear um, as I'm writing, and I'm just like not trying to like think about them too much. But then afterwards, I go back and I can like interpret them. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, this moment comes from this experience as a kid. Um, and I think another piece of it is that like, a lot of these things in the book are things I experienced, but they didn't like work out in a way that was like healing. They didn't, th their outcomes weren't the outcomes that I would have hoped for, like looking back. And the great thing about you know writing fiction is you get to go back and like change things and have them, you know, for that kid reader especially, like, you know, work out in a way that supports them and that gives them that that kind of like yeah that uh, therapeutic response to the story. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. So um, yeah. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, yeah, uh, feel free to take your mask with you uh, as a souvenir of this experience. And then I'll, I'll just be right out there signing books, chatting some more. So feel free to come up and say hi. Thank you. All right.